Hello and welcome to another video on Progressive Coder. Today we are going to continue learning about type ORM and this time we are going to look at a frequent question about type ORM. How do we connect type ORM with MongoDB? If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing and don't forget to press the bell icon to receive instant notifications. The thing with type ORM is that it became popular as an ORM for SQL databases such as Postgres or MySQL. However, over the years, type ORM has also started supporting MongoDB, which is a NoSQL database. But why does it matter to use type ORM with MongoDB? For one, applications following a microservice-based architecture may have multiple databases in their overall application design. It is not unheard of that a single application boundary might have a SQL database for some of its functions and a NoSQL database for something else. However, still the larger portion of usage is for SQL databases. If a team is working on type ORM with a SQL database, chances are that they have become pretty comfortable with type ORM. However, using another framework for a NoSQL based functionality might lead to some cost run ups as the developers have to get used to another ORM specifically designed for NoSQL databases. This is where type ORM MongoDB support can come in quite handy. We will look at the step by step approach to using MongoDB with type ORM. The first step is to configure a connection to the MongoDB database. Let us assume that we have a MongoDB server running on localhost and the default port of 27017. With that in mind, we configure the type ORM data source. Basically, type ORM data source is configured by creating an instance of data source class from type ORM. The constructor of this class takes an object as input with some important options such as type of the database, the database name, synchronization settings, logging settings, and entities. In case our MongoDB instance is running on some other host, we can provide the same here along with credentials as well. With the connection settings out of the way, the next thing is to create entities for our MongoDB database. For example, if we were building a Twitter-like application, we can start with a tweet entity, we decorate it with entity decorator, then for the MongoDB object ID, type ORM provides object ID column decorator and data type object ID. Next, we have other fields such as content and username. Apart from the object ID related decorators, there is hardly any difference between the decorators for MongoDB and type ORM for SQL databases. We have the same entity decorator denoting a table and column decorator for fields of the table. In MongoDB terms, we will have collections instead of tables. Now, how do we insert data into the tweet collection? Well, it is quite straightforward. We can simply create a new instance for the tweet entity. We then set the values of the respective fields. And then we use the app data source manager to save the tweet. As simple as that. Moving on, MongoDB has the concept of documents and subdocuments. From the database point of view, subdocuments are part of the document. However, we need to handle them as separate entities within the application code in order to keep our application modular. With type ORM, we can easily support subdocuments. For example, we extend our tweet entity with a couple of new fields. First is the replies to the tweet. There can be one or more than one reply and we manage them in the reply entity. Second, we have statistics for the tweet. For this also, we create a separate entity. Within the tweet entity, we simply decorate these new entities with column decorator and specify the target type as reply and statistics respectively. Now we can simply declare reply class with a couple of fields, text and username. Also, the statistics class with another couple of fields, likes and retweets. Notice that we don't have to decorate these classes with entity. They will be 
part of the tweet document itself. As far as inserting a new document with all its sub-documents is concerned, there is not much of a difference. Along with the new instance for tweet entity, we also create a new instance of statistics and a couple of new instances for replies. We assign them to the tweet instance and finally save the tweet using Mongo Data Manager. Also, we can fetch the tweets from the database using the find method. With this, we are done with integrating type ORM with a MongoDB database. If this video was helpful, please do like and comment and see you till next time.